Good day, Dr. Anisa. We are from Group 1. I'm Tan Sesen. Alongside with me is Fuja Wun and Joy Chai Singh. For this project, our group will be discussing the potential to produce ethylene glycol or EG from natural gas stream. In general, methane takes up a major composition of a raw natural gas stream, followed by a significant amount of hydrocarbons such as ethane, propane, butane, and etc., accompanied by a small number of contaminants including water and acidic gases such as carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. The hydrocarbons in form of natural gas liquid and GL are separated and utilized as petrochemical feedstock. Ethane in particular is a primary source of petrochemical feedstock to various useful products including ethylene glycol production as antifreeze agent in coolant as well as organic absorbent. With that said, we will take you through the natural gas treatment process, the ethane recovery process from natural gas stream and the ethylene glycol production process in this project. Prior to the extraction and separation of natural gas liquid, raw natural gas stream should undergo effective treatment processes, namely the gas sweetening or acid gas removal process and the dehydration process. Contaminants such as water content and acid gases should be removed from the natural gas stream to ensure the natural gas transportation and usage safety, to improve the calorific value of gas, to comply with environmental standards and regulation, and to ensure long-term operational integrity by protecting the pipelines and storage facilities from corrosion and formation of hydrate. Firstly, let's discuss the sweetening of natural gas. Several techniques of removing carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide practiced in industry includes chemical absorption using liquid solvent and physical absorption using iron sponge. Based on the composition and partial pressure of acid gases in the raw natural gas, the amine solvent absorption is more preferred as depicted in the process selection chart shown. This is due to the large amount of CO2 and H2S present in the feed to be removed and its scalability for large-scale operations. Amines are well suited for applications where the acid gas partial pressure are low and low acid gas contents are required on the treated gas. The chemical solvent processes are characterized by a relatively high heat of acid gas absorption. A substantial amount of heat is required for solvent regeneration. In addition, different amines vary in their equilibrium absorption characteristics for the various acid gases and have different sensitivities with respect to solvent stability and corrosion characteristics. Comparisons have been drawn between four types of amine solutions commonly used in industry, including the monoethanol amine MPA, diethanol amine DEA, diisopropanol amine DIPA, and methyl diethanol amine MDEA. DIPA turns out to be the most suitable amine solutions due to its capability to remove both CO2 and H2S, being non-corrosive to equipment use, requires low energy for its regeneration, and the lower loss of amine throughout regeneration to save operational costs. The general process flow of the acid gas removal system includes the acid gas removal section and the amine regeneration section. The feed sour gas is filtered and flows into the amine absorber where it is in contact with the lean amine solution in counter current direction. The sweetened natural gas will leave the top of the absorber while the rich amine containing the acid gases content will leave at the bottom and flash through the flash tank to remove dissolved hydrocarbons and condensates. After passing through the solvent heat exchanger, the preheated rich amine will enter the sweeper, where acid gases are removed through bond breaking with the heat supplied by the reboiler. The strip acid gases will leave the top of the sweeper, and the regenerated lean amine will be recycled back into the absorber for absorption. Moving on, we will discuss the dehydration of natural gas. Among the different natural gas dehydration processes, absorption is the most common technique, where the water vapor is in the gas stream is absorbed in a liquid solvent stream. The liquid that is most desirable to be used for commercial dehydration purposes should, should possess the following properties, including high absorption efficiency, easy and economic regeneration, non-corrosive and non-toxic, no operational problems such as high viscosity when used in high concentrations, and minimum absorption of hydrocarbons in the gas and no potential contamination by the acid gases. Glycols are the most widely used absorption liquids as they approximate the properties that meet the commercial application criteria. Several glycols have been found suitable for commercial applications, including monoethylene glycol MEG, diethylene glycol DEG, triethylene glycol TEG, and tetraethylene glycol TREG. TEG is the most common used desiccant in natural gas dehydration as it has a relatively lower vapor pressure as compared to MEG and DEG. 
hence promoting minimal loss due to evaporation. On top of that, the higher decomposition temperature of TEG allows regeneration to occur to rejuvenate high-purity TEG to be reused. The selectivity towards water absorption without absorbing any hydrocarbons sustain the recovery of hydrocarbons in the upcoming processes. In a typical natural gas dehydration system, the major processes include water content absorption and TEG regeneration. Wet natural gas is flown through a scrubber, then the glycol contactor where it comes in contact with the lean TEG in counter current direction. The dry gas leaves the contactor for further processing, while the rich glycol is flown into the steel column to be heated and then flashed through the flash drum to recover flash gas as fuel gas. The remain rich TEG is then cooled and filtered before the water content is removed by the heat from the reboiler in the steel column. The regenerated lean TEG is then recycled back for the next dehydration cycle. Next, I will be discussing on ethane recovery. In this case, cryogenic process which is similar to distillation is chosen to recover ethane. This is because lighter hydrocarbons such as ethane are often more difficult to recover from natural gas stream. The principle of cryogenic separates ethane from other hydrocarbons and impurities by taking advantage of their different boiling points which could achieve more than 90% recovery of ethane. As shown on the screen, it's the simplified flow diagram of cryogenic plant. The advantages of cryogenic is achieving high purity of ethane, effective for separating gases with very low boiling points and integrate energy recovery system, such as turbo expander, to improve overall energy efficiency. On the other hand, the disadvantages of cryogenic includes higher energy consumption, higher capital and operating costs compared to refrigerant method, and more sensitive to impurities, thus, effective pretreatment is needed. The process of cryogenic starts with inlet gas pretreatment. The natural gas enters the plant at high pressure, 1000 PSIG, and is initially passed through a microfiber filter separator to remove any solid particles and liquid condensates. The gas then goes through a dehydrator to remove moisture, preventing hydrate formation in the subsequent cooling stages. The pre-treated gas is passed through a gas-gas exchanger to reduce the temperature of the gas to around negative 90 Fahrenheit. For the cold separation stage, the condensed heavier hydrocarbons, including ethane, are separated from the lighter gases. The cool gas is then directed to a turbo expander, causing it to further cool, thus enhancing the condensation of heavier carbon hydrocarbons. The separated liquid hydrocarbons enter the demethanizer column at around negative 150 Fahrenheit and 225 PSIG where methane and any remaining lighter gases are stripped off. In the demethanizer, ethane, which has a lower boiling point at around negative 128 Fahrenheit, exits the top of the demethanizer as a purified product. Here is the product specifications of ethane with 93.6% of recovery from a simulated industrial plant with the process conditions stated above. After recovering ethane, ethylene production is focused on here, ethylene production process using steam cracking. Currently, steam cracking is the most prevalent process for the production of light olefins, especially ethylene and propylene, and this process has a worldwide production of more than 150 million metric tons of ethylene and propylene annually. This process is a non-catalytic, radicals-promoted thermal cracking process which is performed in the presence of steam at high temperature and short resistance time. Basically, the production of ethylene are separated into three main sections. First is the steam cracking. Ethylene and steam in a 3 to 1 volumetric ratio are introduced into the cracking reactor at a temperature of 950 degrees Celsius and ambient temperature. And ambient pressure. The main product of this reaction is ethylene along with byproducts hydrogen and methane. Next, 
would be the water removal part where the product stream enters an absorption tower utilizing TEG at 25 degrees Celsius and embryo pressure to remove water. Then would be the ethylene recovery where the dehydrated product stream is compressed and cooled. First separation occurs in the solution tower TD1 which hydrogen and methane are separated. Second separation occurs in TD2 where an industrial grade ethylene product with a molar polarity of 99.9% .9 is obtained. Good day, I'm Joy and I will now continue with the production of ethylene glycol. In this project, ethylene glycol has been selected as the petrochemical product because it is produced from ethylene oxide, the second most popular ethylene derivative. Ethylene glycol has been chosen due to its high market demand, particularly in the Asia-Pacific market, with a compound annual growth rate of 5.3% from 2023 to 2033. This versatile petrochemical product has wide applications in the automobile industry as antifreeze, and it serves as a precursor chemical for the packaging and textile industries. The production of ethylene glycol from ethylene undergoes two reactions, which are epoxidation of ethylene and direct hydrolysis of ethylene oxide. In the first reaction, which is epoxidation, ethylene will undergo partial oxidation to produce the desired ethylene oxide, along with the complete combustion to produce carbon dioxide and water as byproducts. This slide shows the process flow diagram of the exothermic epoxidation process. The oxidation process occurs over the catalyst of silver, cesium, and rhenium co impregnated on alpha alumina, which allows an ethylene conversion of 10% and ethylene oxide selectivity of 84%. In the reaction, the ethylene and oxygen feeds are compressed and mixed in the ratio between 3 to 1 to 6 to 1. After preheating, the mixture enters the fixed bed multi tubular reactor packed with catalyst, operating at 220 to 260 degrees Celsius and 2 MPa. Both partial and complete oxidation of ethylene produces ethylene oxide, carbon dioxide, and water, and the reactor is cooled by boiling water. Next, the reactor effluent is cooled to condense water and part of ethylene oxide. In the absorber, Large amount of ethylene oxide dissolves in the liquid phase, while 75% of undissolved gases is recycled to the reactor via top stream. The condensed ethylene oxide flows into the stripper to be separated from the dissolved gases, including carbon dioxide, subsequently enters two consecutive distillation columns for dehydration to obtain pure ethylene oxide. From previous ethylene oxide absorber, 25% of undissolved gases enter the carbon dioxide absorber with aqueous potassium carbonate to remove carbon dioxide. This strategy is integrated in this process to minimize the carbon dioxide concentration in the recycled stream to the reactor. The unreacted ethylene and oxygen in vapor phase are recycled back to reactor via gas liquid separator while the potassium bicarbonate is regenerated to potassium carbonate with carbon dioxide vented in the carbon dioxide stripper. The second reaction is direct hydrolysis of ethylene oxide to ethylene glycol, also known as monoethylene glycol, with the proposed process shown in the flow diagram. Firstly, the purified ethylene oxide from previous process is mixed with excess water in the ratio of 1 to 10 to reduce the formation of higher glycols. After preheating, the mixture enters the tubular reactor at mild conditions of 100 to 150 degrees Celsius and 4 to 10 bar, with a residence time of 30 to 60 minutes. The hydrolysis reaction allows complete conversion of ethylene oxide with 85% selectivity towards monoethylene glycol as main product, while diethylene glycol and triethylene glycol are produced as byproducts. This process flow diagram comprehensively illustrates all the discussed processes in this presentation. The process starts with the wet gas sweetening and dehydration, followed by ethane recovery and ethylene production, and finally concludes with ethylene glycol production. That's the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.